This is the next project. Uh, going to be an open segmented bowl made out of three different colors of wood. This is the spreadsheet. Uh, the part that's going to be different about this is each alternating ring is going to go from 3 8 to 3 16 3 8 3 16 and what I'm going to do is between each row I am going to offset by I, I believe one degree that I'll have to see when I actually get it put together but uh, each row is going to rotate a little bit clockwise and uh, It'll cause it to spiral without actually changing the blocks. So that's the uh, the spreadsheet for the for the pieces. That's just a regular pattern. It's I didn't go I didn't one up because it's just re repetitive. You get one two rings. That's all you really need. And that's going to be the design. Um, going to be maple, wenge, and I can't pronounce that orange colored wood. Uh, I'll put it here on the screen, uh, and that's what it's going to look like. Of course, the center is going to be much smaller than that, um, and the first row is actually going to go clean to the center, uh, like we did on the last bowl. So uh, I'll start cutting pieces, and we'll get this thing underway. Okay, it's been about 25 minutes. I'm going to 
got a glue fast or something. Three more and we'll have a base. Okay, it's time to put the four quarters together. Okay, we'll leave that dry and we got our first row. Now this is the waste block, the grain running up and down. I have it marked on the top. This will be the base of the bowl. Put this in here, put glue on it, we'll clamp it up. That's what I'll do next. I'll leave that set about five minutes or so until it starts to tack up and then I'll probably put it in a ring press. I'm in the process of drilling a two inch hole three eighths of an inch deep in the base.
or seven thousandths too deep this gets sanded yet so that should be good I have a piece of maple with, stuck fast to a piece of MDF with uh, double stick tape now we're going to turn a maple plug to fit that two inch hole we just created and there's the base with the uh, two inch maple insert and there's the first ring glued to the waste block or to the base now we can start adding the uh, open segments and there it is with a 3 8 inch hole drilled in the center There's the 48 pieces for the first row. They have to be sanded and sanding sealer put on them first. Now to get the first row lined up with the base, it's on the chuck ring. Loosen this. Rotate it to where we want it. Lock it down. I will start gluing these on. The first row has been glued into place. The second row, first open segmented row. And as usual, we coat the inside of each piece with sanding sealer. Now for the third row, I tried rotating this one degree. One degree is too much. The pieces below it are too thin. So for this row, I'm rather than uh, move that chuck ring, what I did is I put this piece of tape on here and I drew a line. I'm not using the red line here. I'm using this black line. That's a half a degree uh, different than the row below it. Uh, when I do the fourth row, we'll see, you know, if I have to use one degree, half degree, or will I increase it as we go up the bowl as the pieces get wider. But for right now, the next row is going to be a half a degree. Right, okay, the third row is on, and it is off by a half a degree. I know, I went to all the trouble to make this so I could keep everything perfect, and now I'm moving it so that it's uh, not aligned anymore. Well, we'll see how this looks. It may look nice, it may not look too good. That's the fourth ring glued on. I do see one mistake I made. I should have went with 24 pieces to a row. These pieces are too narrow to allow much of an offset. But we'll do as much as we can. But if I had went 24 pieces to a row, these end pieces would have been twice as wide. It would have gave me a little more room to, to move the pieces. But we'll continue on and see how this works out. That's the fifth ring in place. Now after that glue dries, uh, I'll start to try and turn this center. If it's going to break, uh, let's find out early. Rings six and seven have been put on. And as you can see, I'm getting very little twist. I thought I'd get much more twist out of this. And I would have if I'd have went with 12 pieces. But we'll continue on and see what happens to it. Also, you can see I started to rough the inside in. Outside I didn't touch, but the inside I started to rough in. nine rows on. It's not twisting as much as I thought it would.
that's the last row on before the solar ring at the top. And if you notice, these four rows, at least the first three, look so much wider than these and they're all exactly the same. That's because these have already been cut. These have to be, when, once these are cut, they'll look wide like that. On a 45 degree angle like that, you pick up almost 50% in width, or height rather. Now we're back to using the sled to make the top row. Turn on the air, and it's off. There's the top ring cut out. All I have to do is glue it together. That's what I'll do next. The top ring has been glued to the bowl. I will leave that for at least 24 hours. As you can see, there's a slight twist, but not near what I was expecting. So I'll leave that dry 24 hours, and tomorrow we'll see what we can do with it. There's the bowl before we start to turn it. Let's see how this thing turns out. There's the turn bowl. As you can see, I leave the base as big as I can for as long as I can. Uh, so the next thing that I will do is start cutting this down and forming this down to two, two and a quarter inches, something like that, I guess it'll be. So that's what we'll do next. We'll start hollowing this out, reducing the base. And there's a shot of the inside of the turn bolt. I still haven't made the plug for the center of the bottom. We'll do that very last thing. There's the little button to fit the hole at the base. Uh, I've just finished the, uh, the part that shows. There's the bowl with the button installed and one coat of wipe-on polyurethane. We're going to put on at least another two coats and then we'll turn the base. There's a picture of the bowl with two coats of sanding sealer <clears throat> and three coats of wipe-on polyurethane. Now I'll show you the outside before we turn the base. Now we have to turn this all the way down to about a two, two and a quarter inch base. There's the base of the bowl turned down to its proper size. I'll put a little finish on that, or sanding sealer and then polyurethane. The only thing left to do now is to cut the bowl away from the waste block and turn the bottom. Now I ran the tailstock up with this piece of MDF cut on a taper and a rag to help protect the bowl while we uh, cut it away from the base. Now the cold draws has exceeded the 16 inch capacity of the lathe so I had to rotate the head so we have access to the base. Uh, now we'll turn the base. Well, we turn the bottom. Now you can see the reason for the maple plug in the base gives me a place to sign my name. So I'll sand that now and sign it and we'll put finish on the base. Okay, the bowl is complete. As you can see, I guess it has a very slight twist to it. Uh, not what I thought I was going to have. Of course, that's just because I didn't stop and really think this thing through. It's been signed. Uh, that's why I put the maple plug in there, to give me some place to sign it. So, once again, I'd like to thank you for watching. As of this morning, I have given out 474 copies of the spreadsheet to make a dizzy bowl. The people that are having trouble have failed to realize one thing which I did not say in the video. I used a 45 degree angle so I went up a quarter and out a quarter. I made that, I cut that back down to 0 0.210. If the bowl would have been very tall I couldn't have got away with that for very long. Now if you go up, if the thickness of each ring is a quarter and you only go out an eighth, this angle is going to increase to 63.4 degrees. If you only go up an eighth and out a quarter, then you're going to have a very flat bowl and it's only going to be 26.6 degrees. So you almost have to draw this on quadrille paper or something uh, to make sure that the thickness of your rings uh, and the amount of pieces you're going to cut are going to work out. 
So I just thought I'd mention that. And uh, everyone that has sent and asked me questions, I always ask them to send me a photo of something they've done. Uh, so now to fill in the rest of the time, I'm going to show you those videos.